Hello and welcome to another episode of Pinchy Reviews FPV Drone Part. Today we have the Newbie Drone Smooth Motor. This is a motor that's been causing waves thanks to its unique ring magnet as compared to other motors on the market that have individual magnets. I believe this will definitely make it smoother because you don't have to deal with the tolerances of having individual magnets even though this magnet does have internally individual poles. Now how they do that black magic I do not know. Anyway, I'm not gonna go too deep into the technical aspect of it because I believe other guys have done that better. Look down in the video description, there's a link to Leviathan's video. He put a lot of work into the spec of this motor and how it was built and all the, the fancy stuff that I'm not gonna go into. And also Bardwell did a review of them. So I'll put a link in the description for that as well. What I can tell you from my point of view is that I like the base design. I like how thick it is. I like that it has this retainer here and that paste to hold the wires in place. This is something some motors do one or the other, not both. Because of the thick magnet, the motor is a little bit bigger and gains about two grams in weight, give or take. I actually put it on the scale earlier and I found that it weighs 37.5 grams with the wires. There we go, you can't see it, but that's what it is. And take away 2.5 grams for wire, more or less, you got 35 grams. And I believe this motor normally without the rig magnet would be about 30, 32 or 33 grams. So yes, there's a little bit of weight added because of it, but there's a reason, you know, it's very unique and you have to deal with the weight because of it. Either way, it's amazing looking. I love the bell design. It's one of the best looking bells of any motor in the market, in my opinion. And uh, Levi said something about Mercedes S-Class. Uh, might be, I'm not sure. I'm not a big Mercedes fan, Porsche. But anyway, uh, it really is a very, very good looking motor. When you take the box here, the, it just comes with the motor itself, a nut and your screws to put them on your arms. I like the little tub because I use these things to store screws and things like that in my bag when I'm out in the field or in my bench. Um, I am pretty excited about this. My intention is to fly it as a cinematic motor, not as a freestyle motor. Some people are saying that they don't have the punch for a freestyle motor. Maybe that's true for some guys because a lot of guys like really explosive power. Me, on the other hand, I build my quads to be very smooth and my style normally calls for a slightly underpowered to mid power quad. I don't build them with explosive power. I usually dial them out down a little bit. So possibly for me, they'll be just fine. I'll find out when I'm actually flying them. Everything is very high quality on this thing and looks really, really good. I love the gold color by the way, which is sort of a cross between brass or bronze to gold beautiful looking motor so yes like i said my intention is to use it as a cinematic motor i'll give you guys in a second more details on to as to what quad i'm putting them on what the purpose is and how i intend to make these work for me so i haven't flown them yet but word on the street is that they are very smooth which is basically what they're intended to be and i believe the whole thing about the ring magnets makes sense i mean you can have a very very close gap but because you don't have those variations from having those spacings there's no individual tolerances for uh the magnets that can cause more basic feedback back into the esc and it's just smooth overall
All right, let's go over some of the details here before we go and put this thing up in the air. The smooth motors are on there, as you can see. I used the Impulse RC race wire that's designed for the Apex HD, which is what this frame is. I am going to call this the Newbie Drone build because just about everything on it is Newbie Drone or comes from Newbie Drone, except of course the DJI unit, which they also sell by the way. Um, on there is the, uh, their Infinity stack, which is the ESC at the bottom and the FC on the top. The FC is powering the DJI unit. This is going to be 6S, so this needs to convert the power from 4S to 6S, which is what this it's actually designed to do. I put a cap on the front there and the cap actually goes to the front ground and power pads on the ESC. Those are on the same rail as the main leads. It's convenient because there's no space in the back so I put them up front. I actually asked one of the newbie doing engineers if those pads were actually on the same rails as the main power pads. They said yes so we're good to go there. One thing I made different here was that I added a little 35 volt, I think this is a 220 microfarad cap to the main VBAT and ground leads on the flight controller. I didn't ask them, uh, I just like to add capacitance when I can, especially given that this needs to power that and in the event of a spike, this could help, maybe not, I don't know, because I don't know if the how these uh, main power pads are distributed along the board, but it can definitely uh, it won't help. I mean, it won't uh, hurt. So it's uh, it's a, a good thing to try. Cat, what are you doing outside? Hey, come here. Why are you outside? Anyway, back to his. Um, that's the most notable thing that you need to see on this build. Um, I have this setup on here that I don't necessarily like. I mean, I like the arrangement. It's going to work fine. It's just that I would like to avoid these dual SMAs back here. I think it's too heavy. So the setup that I have on the Rush video or the Rush antennas, uh, I'll put a link right there for it. I think it's better because it's way lighter. This adds a lot of weight. I think about, I don't know, 15 or 20 grams total, which is way more than I would like on there for no good reason. Uh, there you have it. So we're gonna put, in, put it in the air, the fit of the motors, everything looks great. There's no soft mounting on the motors like I usually do. I just put them straight up on there. So yeah, let's... Uh, See if we get a break in the weather because it's been raining nonstop and see if we can put this thing into, in the air. What's up? Um, ignore the Mario. Um, there should be a video up now or soon, I don't know yet, about this analog mod for DJI. So look in the video description or soon it will be in the video description. All right, the newbie drone smooth motors. I'm very impressed. So far, I am so impressed that I'm kind of beating myself for not having tried them earlier. Like they've been out for months. And Levi, Leviathan, he helped, you know, he did the testing on all the prototypes and then finally they came out with this version. So I could have tried them earlier. Yeah, um, you know, they are a little bit underpowered. So if you are one of the guys that likes super powerful, like explosive motors, they might not be for you. I, on the other hand, it kind of fits me perfectly because my F42, 2150s on 5S feel right about the same as these 2306s, which that's what the F40s are, on 6S, as the 1750. The down low, they have enough grunt for me. They feel really close to about the same. The power curve is weird. It's like, not weird, but it's more like it's very linear. Then up top, they lose quite a bit of power. But for my style, where I focus on being more smooth than being explosive, they're perfect. And not only that, the tune, like it's just so good. Now, uh, Bartwell did a video on this and he said the very same thing. He's like, well, in theory, it should be that you could up the pids and lower filters and they should fly better because of it. And he did it. He did mention it and he talked about it, but I don't think he made it such a point. Like it really should have been a point. Like right now I'm, riding, I'm running higher pids 
than on any of my other quads. This is a um, Betaflight 414, I think. And filtering, it's almost dying at the end. I think I'm two notches from the end. And I'm using sliders only, even for the pits, just because I want to see what's going on. And I've only flown three batteries. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fly another battery with you guys on board. So this would be the fourth battery. And then I might bring it back in again, dime the the sliders all the way right to like get the filter way low and then uh maybe increase pitch some more and fly it again and see what happens but right now it's just the smoothness that's all it's, that it is and the thing is with, with dji it's bothered me at times because i've had quads that i think are tuned and seem well on analog and then i see imperfections when i'm looking through the hd video and it really messes with my, my head because i like a perfect perfect tune so um it's been very good for especially for DJI quads because um, one thing I wasn't liking about it was enjoying really good clean flight when I was seeing imperfections, you know. So this is good. We're gonna go off and fly it. Let's. Uh, uh, I'll sync up and we'll take it up in the air. By the way, today is pajama day because I can, and also because everybody's home because of this virus thing. So it's kind of nice that I have my own little flying spot here. I don't have to go anywhere. I can fly in pajamas. Sorry for you guys that cannot. All right, I'm gonna try and speak up so you guys can hear me. It's super cold, foggy today, but uh, let's go and do this. Uh, my battery's not gonna be happy. So, okay. I'm gonna have to sync the video. See? By the way, I'm flying through a session five. I don't want to do any stabilization because I want you to see how smooth this really is without any pulse processing or anything like that. All righty, let's do it. I'm in the frame, it's all good. Let's go ahead and, there you go. Nothing impressive because I don't want to risk crashing and have to go pick this up in pajamas, but let's just go ahead and get up there. So the throttle curve is really interesting. It's very linear, so it's easy to, uh, to feel them out. And getting used to the less power, it's really a personal thing. That's just fine for me because they feel so much like what I'm used to in terms of power, just a lot, lot smoother. Um, and that smoothness is just fun. Oh, oh, nearly crashed there. It's first battery today, so. Gotta warm up a little. Look at that, I pick it up fine. Let's go ahead and dive and see how that feels. And just pick it up on the bottom, full. See this thing, it's like, it's fine. I mean, I'm flying 51, 4, 6, 6 props. And I'm perfectly happy with this. I like the Hurricane 51, 4, 6, 6 on 6S because the extra pitch is good. I don't tend to fly in that much on 5S. I fly uh, S4s on 5S, FX, but I really do like these on 6S, even on a motor like this. Because honestly, at the bottom end, it's fine. It's just the top is a little low, and still, I'm pretty happy with that. I saw a little bit of uh, wobble there, so maybe I have to be careful with the filtering or the pits. Maybe do a little bit of... Um... Okay, let's see. Easy there. Might have to do this flight again. Just have to warm up a little. But they just feel great. I'm, I, I gotta get more sets of these motors. This is just fantastic. Now, I have to fly with a Hero 7 to see how I'm gonna feel about the extra weight. But I'm absolutely loving how this is feeling. And you know what, this is Infinity Stack, which is beta flight. And a lot of you guys that follow my videos, you know that I fly Flight 1 most of the time, Falco X. So eventually you can bet I'm gonna put these motors on a Flight 1 Falco X rig. But even beta flight, just, it feels amazing with these motors. As much as I sometimes I'm like all frustrated with beta flight. There you go. Now I got, I'm gonna do a punch out to see if I can 
possibly afford higher PIDs or maybe less filtering. Right here. Actually, yes, bad. I, I thought I saw Wobbler earlier, but a little bit there. There we go. Um, so, might have to do a little bit of a adjustment if I keep the high PIDs uh, for punch outs. But the filtering could possibly get reduced even more. And I flew this back to back with my best Flight One rig for DJI, which uses my usual F40 motors. And I, I like this more. Not because of the Flight One thing, just because of the motors. Like, I can't wait to try this on Flight One. Yep. All right, I'm gonna come down and do this again. Make a small adjustment and see how it goes. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. Um, I have the sliders almost dimed all the way to the right. I'll put a screenshot now so you can see the filters all the way down. Um, and it's almost all the way to the end. I just didn't want to hit all the way to the end for, I don't know, because it feels weird to do so. And then the pids, I upped them one more with the slider. But one thing I did was added more TPA. So I set up 0 0.65, 0 0.75 of TPA uh, for those punch outs. But the main thing is down low. I want to see how much... I can increase those speeds and how responsive I can get the quad feeling because that's the thing. You might have a little bit less power with these motors, but because they do have torque, the responsiveness is there. And if you can get those pits really high and the filtering very low, I think the responsive, the responsiveness can be better than a more powerful motor. Yeah, but buttery. So let's go ahead and put, a, put a, the quad up in the air. Um, and try out this flight. Again, I'm gonna try and not crash because I'm gonna fly very um, conservative because I don't wanna go get my quad in pajamas. So what we're gonna do is this, uh, again, this is another motor I wanted to fly somewhere else for a video, but given everybody's home, I'm just gonna do it here. All right, here we go. So remember, I have very high pits but a little bit more TPA, which means that you have higher pits below towards the bottom but um, I should be able to get a slight drop in PIDs when I punch it out. Let's do this. Engine on. Here we go. All right, so that might have been too much. You notice that? I can already tell it's a little bit frenetic. Like it didn't like that I went so crazy with the uh, with the filters and pids. It still flies okay, very responsive, but I can already tell it's struggling and that I'm getting more vibes and it's too frenetic for my liking. So I wanna come back in, make a slight adjustment and then fly the same battery again. Okay, so this is gonna be flight six or flight seven, I'm not sure. Uh, I did not intend this to be a tuning video, but given the motors are so good, I wanted to see how close of a good tune I could get with them. Again, if it's six or seven, the point is it's just a handful of batteries and I'm getting a tune that I'm very happy with. Uh, so what I did now, so you know, just in case I didn't display the rest of the other video, maybe I did, I don't know, we'll see in the video. The point is that I um, brought the filters one notch back, they were almost maxed, one notch from me max, I brought them down one more, and then the pits, I lowered them again the, with the sliders, one down as well, but I kept the TPA at 75, so default is 0 0.65, I made it 0 0.75 because I think it could use a little bit of TPA at the top because I'm already pushing the pits pretty high, but given that I found that spot when pits and filters, like reduced filters is too much, and you, and you, um, dial in down, that to me is when you find a good tune, when you have a quad that feels the way you want it, flies smoothly, and you find that upper edge of the pit where the quad starts to get frenetic and you start to hear deep flutter, and you dial it down a little bit and it flies good, that to me is a very good tune. So we're gonna go ahead and put it back up in the air and, uh, and I'll let you know how it feels uh, throughout the video. Let's go. So, I put a fresh pack on it, even though the other pack was halfway. I'm gonna go ahead and sync video now. 
Again, a session five, so no stabilization. Okay, I really do expect this flight is gonna be the best tune I have so far, given that I've been testing up and down the different ranges, and I really think this is gonna be it. Um, again, I'm not going here for any impressive freestyle. I just want to display the motors. We'll leave the showboating for a different day. Okay? All right, here you go. So far, nice and smooth. Yeah, I'm really liking this. So it feels crispy, nice and torquey, and the tune feels really good. Um, prop wash is very minimal, as you can see there. Let's try and, and do some prop wash again. Look at that, a little bit there. I might still be able to dial it down some more, but that's very acceptable because I'm basically putting myself in a position where I'm guaranteed to get prop wash, you know? Normally I would not do that. I would fly to try and keep it as clean as possible. But when tuning, it's a good idea to try and do spot wash to see how good you can get it to be. Look at that, nice catch. So no problem in power, in terms of power catching the quad. Let's go ahead and go over it from here. Yeah, I mean, I might notice the weight of a, of a Hero 7 a little bit, but I expect that this rig is gonna be cinema, cinematic only, given that, but you know, I'm loving it for freestyle. I, I really think I'm gonna start using this motor for freestyle quite a bit, especially on my DJI rigs, and keep my uh, T-Motor S40s on the analog rigs. There's a little bit of prop wash there. Yeah, I should be able to dial in some more. Possibly, instead of using the sliders, I might dial in a little bit more uh, D. And, and go for the numbers instead of the sliders. The filtering, I think it's fine where it is. But I might be able to tweak the dynamic filter or turn it off altogether. I still haven't tried that yet. But I'm going to say that right now, I am basically 95% tuned. And you know what? Sometimes that 95% is always a 95%. The reason being that right now we're at high altitude. When I bring it into town, the pits are gonna feel way higher than they do here. Uh, humidity changes, temperature changes, all those things affect your tune. So you don't really always have a 100% tune. You have something, if you can be at 90 to 95% of a good tune, that is kind of like your goal. And then if you feel like tuning on a specific day for any reason, uh, you can do it. Uh, but you're going to have to do it on a case-by-case -case basis because any little thing from altitude to humidity to temperature changes your quad tune. Yeah, I'm very happy with this. I'm, I noticed there a little bit of a prop wash in that uh, spin there, but mm -hmm, super happy. Really, I can't tell you enough good things about these motors they feel so freaking smooth it's ridiculous i love them all right i'm gonna come in my battery is screaming at me that the temperature is too hot too low okay this is what i'm going to tell you about the newbie drone smooth motors by the freaking motors. I do a lot of product reviews and I'll tell you, this is a good product, this is a better product, this is this and that, you know, and I explain the features and whatnot. Rarely ever do I tell you, buy the motors. I'm telling you right now, go down into the video description, find the link, buy the motors. I'm actually gonna make it an affiliate link. So again, I'm kind of like shooting myself in the foot here because you're not gonna believe me now. But anyway, I'm getting more sets of these and I'm building more quads like these. I absolutely love the motor. It's just so smooth. 
as long as you know that you're not going to have the explosive power of a 2207.5 1850 or 7 or 1950 kV and you're willing to trade some of that crazy punch at the top for smoothness and juiciness this is the motor the torque curve is so predictable and you can run high pids where the quad feels so locked in yeah i mean i i'm sold and i'm kind of kicking myself for not having tried them earlier everybody's always like oh they have less power listen some of the best pilots pilots prefer motors with less power think about a steel for example he said it throughout the years he doesn't want the most powerful motors he wants a perfect balance and for me right now this is the most best balance I've had in a motor in a long time. Yeah, so there you have it. Uh, newbie drone, well done. I can't wait to get more sets and try them on Flight 1, for example. But right now, that Infinity stack from them, it's the best it's ever flown. Hands down. All right. Thank you for sticking around and watching my video. Thank you for the time you spent with me today. I uh, Make sure to thumbs up to this video, like it, share it in your groups, in your FPV groups. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for the next review. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, subscribe. Help me out, all right?